know this video was very long and I know that it's going to sadden a lot of you to to watch this and, and hear what's going on but I told you guys that I would I would share it all with you so I know you guys see a lot of positive parts and a lot of fun parts of our our journey and our life together but um this is also part of our reality as well <music> and welcome back to my channel I don't even know how to necessarily really start this video so I'm just going to kind of start from where I left off the other day so the other day you guys know that I was frustrated because I went to the doctors and had to wait and all of that stuff I'm not going to give a recap of all of that but when I went home that day I felt fine this is Tuesday. So on Tuesday I felt fine once I actually calmed down and like got back home. I was hanging out with my parents. I had dinner. Right after dinner I started to feel some cramping again. I kind of felt like I needed to go to the bathroom. I just went just so I could literally go to the bathroom but I started passing a lot of tissue again and a lot of blood. So I moved from the toilet to the tub because that's a lot more comfortable and I was just feeling in a lot of pain. It didn't stop for about like 20 minutes so I asked Jeremy if he could go get my mom. If you don't know my mom is a nurse and she has worked you know in women's health department so I figured she would be able to better evaluate the situation. By this time this was my third day of starting up heavy bleeding again and starting to pass tissue again. So I started bleeding on Sunday, passed tissue Sunday night and a lot of blood. It paused on Monday during the day, Monday night, same thing, a lot of blood, a lot of tissue passed. Then we're on to Tuesday night and it was happening again. So my mom, you know, she stayed in the bathroom with me, kind of helped me out as much as she could with just trying to keep things as clean as possible and everything. And I didn't even realize until Jeremy and my mom told me, but I was in the bathroom for two hours. So I have been actively bleeding and passing tissue for two hours. In that time period, I threw up twice. I had a really uncomfortable bowel movement. I was just really feeling just sick altogether. I was starting to feel faint. My legs were shaking a lot. And my mom told Jeremy, go ahead and call the nurse hotline. You know, tell them that she's been there today and who our doctor is and everything. And they were like, come on in. So my mom was like, let's get going. They drove me to the hospital. I needed a wheelchair because by then I was feeling so faint and my legs were so weak and heavy that I couldn't even walk. So once we got to the ER they started evaluating me and I was literally in so much pain by that time that I could not even talk. I have never felt that amount of pain when going through that. It was like on a scale of 1 to 10 it was a hundred. Once they got me evaluated in the ER, I was still bleeding a lot, passing a lot of tissue. So they put me on an IV, uh, went ahead and did my blood type and cross matching because they thought they might need to give me some blood. I was there for probably three or four hours with no pain medication so that entire time I was just in excruciating pain. I had to do, grab onto the bed a lot to try to breathe through the pain and nothing was really helping. So they put me on fluids. They did a quick pelvic exam. I could have probably killed that doctor because that made things 10 times more painful. Then they went ahead and called my doctor. He was like, I'm coming in now. So he drove in and it took him about 20 minutes to get there. Came in the room and talked to my mom and Jeremy and he talked to me a little, a little bit because I could hear him. I just couldn't really 
respond and he said I'm not going to put you in any more pain I'm not going to do a pelvic exam it's unnecessary he's like at this point we need to do a DNC ASAP they need to start getting a team together right now because your hemoglobin is down to 11 and this has been going on for a few days now he basically said that all the tissue that I had passed over the last few days that should have been it the thought process was that I had passed it all so for me to keep on passing tissue and keep actively bleeding he's like this is an emergent situation if you're bleeding about a pad an hour that then you need to come in before I came into the emergency room on Tuesday night over that those two hours it would have been about four to six pads for those two hours so so he's like we're gonna go ahead and get an OR team together we're going to get all your paperwork signed and get you upstairs so yeah, once they came in um, and did all of my consent forms, they put me on morphine, which made me feel considerably more comfortable. I actually was able to open up my eyes and speak because I had literally been in such an excruciating state that like my eyes were closed the whole time. I didn't see half the people who were in that room the whole night. All the OR staff was on call, so everyone had to drive in to the hospital and my doctor my gynecologist he's the one that went ahead and did the procedure mm. my head is hurting a lot mentally before the procedure I was like okay it's an emergency I don't want to be in this pain anymore I know I'm losing a lot of blood so they need to get going it was just right before they took me up to put me under general anesthesia I kind of started to get just really anxiety ridden because I just I, I guess I just panicked in my mind and felt like I've gone through all this pain and there's no reward in the end and now I'm being put to sleep and I've lost so much blood and you know what if I don't wake up and what was it all for if I don't wake up and that thought like briefly crossed my mind once they got me up to the operating room I saw my doctor who I absolutely love this man is like a godsend I saw him and immediately like all of my anxiety disappeared because I said to myself this man is not gonna let anything slip he's gonna make sure these people are on their a game and he's going to be super attentive and paying attention to everything going on in that operating room. I said a, a quick prayer, kissed my mom and kissed Jeremy and before you know it I was under and when I woke up I really was not aware of everything but I knew my mom was there, my dad was there and Jeremy was there and um <sighs> I'm getting like some cramps and a little bit of nausea right now so that's what's taking me a minute to collect myself but yeah the procedure went really really well it did say that they got a significant amount of fluid and some more tissue out my doctor said you know we de it's definitely a good thing that you came in when you did because we wouldn't have wanted you to lose any more blood when I did come out of the procedure my hemoglobin had gone down to seven which is right at their threshold for giving blood so he didn't want to have to give me blood if it wasn't going to be necessary but I was right at pretty much that cutoff point for whether or not they were going to need to give me blood or not and I really just just thank God for having my family and having a husband who springs into action and having my mom there because my parents drove two and a half hours to come up here because they live in you know PA and my parents drove up here just to spend time with me just to spend time with me and Jeremy and to just be there with us because they knew we were having a difficult time they didn't come up with the intent of anything happening or going wrong because Seemingly, I felt fine for the most part until everything was not fine. So it's really just a blessing that my parents had decided to, to come visit us and come up here. And it really just made things a lot, a lot better. I needed my mom here and I needed my dad just to provide me, you know, with some comfort. Yeah, I, I just definitely thank God because that situation could have gone down way differently. And it was a serious situation, you know. I am not a person who runs to the ER for any and everything. I don't run to the doctor for any and everything 
everything and I'm not being dramatic like if we didn't go when we did I you know potentially could have had a harder time recovering I could have lost too much blood a number of things could have happened when you're bleeding like that and passing tissue that way and you're vomiting and you're getting dehydrated because of all these things it's just you never know how much your body is going to take before it says okay I've had enough it was more so scary because I have gone through miscarriages before and this was I think one of the most scary and excruciating experiences in my life so I was discharged on Wednesday and the discharge diagnosis was basically a mis miscarriage and it notes that I came in for um, vaginal bleeding. They gave me 800 milligrams of ibuprofen that I can take three times a day. They also gave me iron supplements to, that I need to take twice a day just because I had lost so much blood. Like I said before I left the hospital my hemoglobin was seven so they definitely want me to be able to replenish my iron. Before I left my doctor came in the room to see me and um, of course he gave his condolences and he's a very sweet compassionate man he made sure that I had an appointment with him for next week still and he's like you know definitely keep that appointment and come in and we will come up with a plan for you we're going to send you off to a geneticist to see why this is happening and try to get you some answers and get to the bottom of this because he's basically like being so that this is your fourth time it is just at a point now to where we need to we need to do things differently he also let me know kind of what to expect over the next few weeks of course he said you know you already know this but I have to say it no sex for four weeks which I don't exactly have an interest in that right now anyway i'm not even comfortable as i'm sitting here but yeah no sex for four weeks and i am basically supposed to be on rest for two weeks so of course no heavy lifting don't spend every day all day in the bed but don't run around and try to run errands and do all of these things you know you can function but be tender and careful in the way that you're doing things. Over the last few days it's been kind of touch and go. Of course I don't feel like me. My eyes right now are feel very swollen. Like it literally feels like I have two golf balls sitting in my eye sockets because they are feeling really heavy and I'm currently in some pain because I'm keep on cramping and it's it's cramping that starts in the abdomen and radiates down radiates down my pelvis and he said you know that's that's gonna happen for a little while because essentially all that pain that I had been feeling was my cervix opening opening up and my body trying to expel everything so He's like, of course, now you shouldn't be doing that anymore, but your body, your cervix, your uterus, all of that takes time to kind of calm back down. Um, I've definitely been feeling that. Yeah, overall, I just feel pretty crappy. Emotionally, I am very angry. Aside from the doctor that I absolutely love, Dr. M, he is amazing. I had another doctor, Dr. W, I won't say their name, but I had another doctor, Dr. W, who didn't take any of my concerns into consideration. I told her at the last appointment I had with her, four days before all of this started, I went to see her for an appointment and I asked her about doing my blood work and doing ultrasound and, and she dismissed me and said that because I didn't have any symptoms at that time, that I had no reason to worry about anything and that she was not concerned even with my history even though I told her everything she basically wrote me off and said you don't have any symptoms so there's nothing wrong and I'm not concerned and then four days later this happened so I'm definitely angry because it may not have changed the outcome of whether this baby stayed or not I would have at least me and Jeremy would have at least been able to prepare for what was to come. 
and it may, you know, have changed the course of my treatment plan over these last few days. I might not have had to go through what I've had to go through over these last, this is four days now. So I'm definitely angry with how the, the situation went. Of course, Jeremy and I are doing the best we can to grieve and deal with our loss. It's like right now I am I'm sad because this is something that we've been trying to do for a while now and I don't even know like my brain is so frazzled I don't even know how to fully express the extent of what I want to say. I am very sad that this baby was not able to stay with us. I am also very angry because had things gone better as far as my ability to secure an appointment more quickly considering I am a high risk patient, it, it might have changed the outcome. It might not have, but if I was able to get in to see my high risk OB sooner and if that process hadn't taken a couple of weeks to sort itself out, who knows? Maybe they could have put me on progesterone or just helped me out just a little bit because it's very obvious and very clear that the problem isn't our ability to get pregnant. I know that I can get pregnant, but for whatever reason, it's a lot more difficult for me to sustain pregnancy. And that's tough to deal with in itself. One other thing I did want to mention is the fact that I have had a lot of women tell me how lucky I am. They congratulate me and have congratulated me and said, you're so lucky. You're so lucky that it happened so quickly for you because I've been doing this for X number of months or X number of years. There is nothing lucky about having back-to-back -back miscarriages. There is nothing lucky about being able to get pregnant quickly, but not being able to keep your baby and support your baby throughout pregnancy. There is nothing lucky about that. And I just had to say that because it's very hurtful when people tell you how lucky you are. Because it's like, yeah, we we definitely have different journeys and different avenues and different things that we struggle with. But um, I wish that there could be a little bit more um, just awareness surrounding some of the word choices. There is nothing lucky about receiving this beautiful thing, receiving this blessing and this this gift of being able to get pregnant and, and, and being able to conceive a child and yet keep losing them. And that's what I'm having a really hard time dealing with right now. Not only the why of why this keeps on happening, but um, just the fact, just the knowledge of knowing that Jeremy is clearly in working order and you know my ovaries and my eggs are clearly in working order. So it's not really much of a question of how fertile either of us or the combination of us are. It's more of why is my body having a difficult time sustaining pregnancy? We don't know and the, the unknown of that factor is what's difficult right now. I really don't know what else to say. That's the only... I have just started really processing my emotions and that's where I'm at with my feelings. Um, I do have a counseling session coming up. Jeremy and I both have a counseling session coming up so we are going to be able to talk this through in a very therapeutic environment. Of course, we're there for each other throughout this process of trying to process our emotions and our feelings. I am definitely grateful for being alive, for one. I'm grateful that I have a outstanding doctor who I feel like has my best interests at heart and who really wants to help me through this. I'm grateful for the time we did have with this baby and I am grateful for our ability to conceive. I'm grateful for all of those things. 
my gratitude, however, does not, it, it doesn't compensate for the amount of pain that I'm feeling. Yesterday I spent pretty much the whole day crying. It's like a faucet for me. Once it comes on it, I can't turn it off. And I know I will continue to cry through this, this process. Uh, sometimes when I least expect to. But as far as moving forward goes, um, obviously I am on just overall rest for the next two weeks. Um, basically pelvic rest for at least the next four weeks. And um, so that's already a month right there. We are going to be moving forward with um, genetic counseling and a geneticist to see if anything else is going on within our body. We are going to be taking a break for at least the next two months. I'm not going to put a an overall timeline on things. Um, I just know that for at least a month I need to physically heal and I need to make sure that emotionally I am in a good place. In no way, shape, or form are we giving up because we both want this and we both know that it's eventually gonna happen. We are gonna have a baby or babies eventually. We haven't lost faith and we haven't lost sight of the fact that it's obtainable and that it's going to happen for us. I want to thank everyone who has supported us throughout our journey and I know that is still going to support us. I want to thank you for all of your prayers and all of your encouragement. I also know there's a lot of pregnant women who watch our channel and who found out that around the same time that I did and have been on the journey along with me. I just want to say to you guys, I'm still praying for you. I'm very glad that you have your blessings and I still really sincerely hope that you continue to have a healthy pregnancy and a healthy journey and a safe delivery. So I'm still rooting for you guys. So that is where we're at with things. We are not giving up. We are just taking our time to grieve. We are going to go through the and down the rabbit hole of extensive testing for both of us. And we're going to come up with a, a different game plan and a solid game plan because currently something is not working. So, so that's where everything was at. I know this video was very long and I know that it's going to sadden a lot of you to, to watch this and, and hear what's going on. But I told you guys that I would, I would share it all with you. So I know you guys see a lot of positive parts and a lot of fun parts of our our journey and our life together but um this is also part of our reality as well we definitely appreciate all of the support and all of the love that you guys are providing and sending to us so thank you to you all that's all i really have so i'm gonna get off here so that i can go ahead and relax and rest and i will see you guys when i have the next installment of updates I hope you all have a wonderful week and I hope that whatever you're going through in your life right now turns out very well for you. Bye.